Welcome to another episode of Tea Time where we'll bring you the biggest entertainment stories and definitely analyze them for you. My name is Elsie Godwin and I have my interesting co anchors with me, Ife Omai and Ife Oluwa Oshunke. Hi. Hi. How you doing? That's me. What's up? Yeah. <laughs> You're a bit late on that one, but yeah. we'll, let, we'll let it, we'll let we'll it let slide. It go. Mm. No, it's good, it's good, it's good. Mm -hmm. It happens. This how you doing? Happen, right? Well, how are you? Do you want to share? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> Nothing. Yeah, if you, you don't know the <laughs> So you guys are not doing okay. I think I'm just going to step down from this thing. I just want to make it a gender based. See, see threats now. No, it's cool now. It's cool now. We want to make it a gender based thing now. So it's only girl G's that we used to share. It's For not. Me, I used to share all the boy things with you people. Let's, so let's this is so this how we used to be in this team now. <laughs> no, it's fine now. It's okay. Oh yeah, sorry. Okay. We'll talk about it after no, the no, show. No, 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 no. Don't even really speak to me. We're keeping malice. Okay, cool. <laughs> now, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> so, people, um, following the rape allegation leveled against Oladapo Uyibanjo, popularly known as the Banj, um, started an online petition basically calling the UN to strip the musician of the title he was supposed to be an ambassador for peace. The, pe the petition on change.org has been signed by over 22,000 people. However, responding to an inquiry, the UN through the Director of Information, United Nations Information Center for Nigeria, Joseph Kayanja, told the punch that the band was never at any time given the title of ambassador by the UN. Mm. The email read in part, quote, I would like to confirm that the said Mr. Oladapo Oyebanjo, um, a.k.a. Dibanj, is not a UN ambassador. The title was accorded to him by an obscure UN youth association, which has nothing to do with the United Nations. I hope this clarifies, end of quote. Um, in 2012, Dibanj's publicist had claimed that the musician was the first Nigerian to be appointed a UN youth ambassador for peace. Marcus, obscure youth. Sit down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sorry, that song just came to my mind. <laughs> <laughs> what version of that song is that? Bad Boos, Set Down. Mm-hmm. May I the rapper? It's Gang Gang. Okay, while you guys are figuring that There's out, no joining that. us in this conversation is a broadcast um, person and the head of media at Smooth FM, Fola Folayan. Hi, Fola. Hi, how are you guys doing? Good morning. Fine, thank you. How are you? I'm good, I'm good, thank you. Mm. Also, Fola does um, PR as well for artists. So, um, we, I want to understand, and this is the part I, I would love you to take this conversation from, which is basically talking about how it seems that some of the things that some of our artists come out to tell us they have done, or people they are affiliated with, or organizations they are affiliated with, um, are not necessarily mm. true. Now, is it when we talk of packaging? Because I know that's where they will come from and say we are packaging it, it will make it, <laughs> fake it, it will make it. Is it absolutely necessary to put out things that are not um, true to maintain your relevance? Of course not. It is not necessary. I understand the motive behind it, I understand why some of these things come out this way. But I'll say one thing, though, that in the entertainment business, there's such a thing as, you know, slight exaggeration. Mm. So um, I, I guess that's where the packaging that you talk about will come from. Because, for instance, uh, we, we hear of endorsement deals from artists and brands, uh, and then you hear of, you know, millions of dollars in endorsements. What they don't tell you is that, you know, they, they're not going to give, give you the breakdown of these endorsement deals that, oh, this person gets a cost, that person gets a percentage, and this is the actual fee that comes to the artist. But they give you the ballpark figure, you know, because of the headlines. The headlines become more attractive when they give you that kind of huge figure. And so it's the same thing. For instance, this band issue, the organization that gave him that award or the endorsement is you know, it's actually an offshoot. It's not the UN uh, as we know it. It's one of those, you know, organizations or NGOs that work under the UN or have affiliations with the UN. And so when they were writing his Wikipedia article, they just basically, that was untrue anyway. That was, that's not an exaggeration. That's stretching the truth, hmm. you know, to the extreme. And that I, I think, and I believe that it is wrong. There's a way you package an artist. There's a way you use language to frame 
you know, an artist's biography or or his profile to make him look at, to make him look a little more attractive, to make him look a little bit more successful, you know, to make him appealing to the fans and to mm. other investors. Mm. But stretching the truth, I think it's absolutely wrong. I, I, it's interesting that you are playing around with the word stretching the, to, the truth and exaggerating the truth. In. But there's a point where exaggerating and stretching just becomes a lie. Um, what are the yeah. consequences of that? So let's say I'm a celebrity. Um, and I say, okay, you know what? I'm the ambassador for MTN, <laughs> um, and I put it out, and I put it out there, and it's my exaggerated lie package, whatever. Are there any consequences for that? Of course, there are consequences, and I think the biggest consequence is loss of credibility, hmm. because when uh, at some point when you are known, you know, to to be a liar or to be someone who exaggerates, then nobody takes you seriously anymore and it gets to a point where you know people look at your press release and you know they take it with a pinch of salt and they tell themselves that hey uh we better double check and triple check the facts to make sure he or she is telling the truth and that is bad for business that is bad for investors that is bad for your pr that is bad for the brand i think it's even bad for everybody because mm, everyone okay. now gets to be Checked. Is she mm. saying the truth? Is he saying the All truth? Right, so my yeah. question would be, um, yeah. why do brands play along with this? Because you cannot tell me that UN is just discovering that the band has been calling himself their ambassador. The first is Nigerian it, ambassador. Yeah, exactly. So we can't <laughs> say that they didn't know that. So are we saying that some of these brands also just milk this based on your popularity so that they can help themselves as well? And then they become selfish as soon as... Um, um, the phases, it's the fan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. Um, to a very large extent, I would say that some of these brands are complicit because, you know, to, uh, and uh, at the risk of dragging any brand here, I would say that to a very large extent, some of our brand managers are quite lazy, you know, to the point where they let some things go. As long as the artist is popular, you know, the person is popping, it's, uh, he or she is making headlines and making waves. They see everything as good for their brand. But this is really wrong. Um, if you also want to look at the flip side of it, sometimes it, might, it works, you know, well for the brand as well. You know, because when someone comes and says, oh, you know, Elsie has just signed a $10 million deal with XYZ brand. Even though XYZ brand knows that the deal is not worth $10 million and it's not exactly, you know, an endorsement deal, so to speak. Maybe Elsie just did a commercial for the brand. And, but because Elsie has this huge following on social media and she can command numbers, so they feel like, oh, it's good for us if, you know, so they're getting the value of an endorsement deal without actually paying for an endorsement deal. It is a so, showbiz indeed. Showbiz and then indeed. everything just gets the vanity metrics of being, you know, bandied about. And it also in increases Elsie's equity as well, brand equity, because now Elsie can take that headline and go to brand CWE and say, oh, I got $10 million from these people. And so you guys got to price me a little bit higher. Mm -hmm. Okay, That's to make that clear, that was hypothetically speaking, I don't have such deal. <laughs> but we'll um, <laughs> <laughs> before we go, or before I let you go, um, I would love you to touch on the Shaito, um story. You've seen how it's, it's been playing out. I mean, you've had to follow yeah. it because of the nature of your job also. Now, what would you say, how would you say this is going to play out? Honestly, um, Nobody can really tell because we we know the kind of country that we live in and the way this uh, the justice system works. But if I were to project, I would say that to a very large extent, the band has played himself. Mm. Because um, when Shaitan came out with her story, if we really want to look at it and look at the way, uh, you know, the Fatou Ingo case played out, mm. um, the statute of limitations, the fact that you cannot get physical evidence, there's so many things that probably would have made it very, very hard for Shaitan to get justice, mm. you know, and it's unfortunate, but that's just the way, you know, the system works. But the band, by allegedly, you know, taking her from when she was detained and detaining her in a private place, taking over her phone and, you know, basically threatening and harassing her, 
he has basically played himself into the hands of the law because what he did uh, allegedly is a crime mm -hmm. you know uh, and so if there was there's going to be any justice done it's the fact that that should be prosecuted that's mm -hmm. the crime that is mm -hmm. that deserves to be prosecuted so while we might not be able to get you know justice for the alleged rape mm -hmm. this intimidation harassment and if i can call it kidnapping because essentially that's what it is mm -hmm. you know that is where he's going to have to face the law hmm. okay we'll definitely watch to see how this plays out but thank you for for your time you're welcome thank you for having me okay I like her um, input into the conversation, especially with the brand um, brand conversation. It kind of makes you really understand that same way that not, not everything that you see is what it is. People um, need to begin to understand that, like last year. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that the, in this industry that we're in is quite... Showbiz. A, yeah, it's quite showbiz. Um, in regards to Chaser's um, conversation, I liked how she... I mean, I think Ereti that we had the other time said the same thing too, um, that for somebody who... Um, is claiming to be innocent, it is hard to be able to make that stance based on the decisions that he has been taking and the actions that he has been making um, in regards to Shaito coming out to allegedly accuse him of being a rapist. So, yeah, the, good, the interesting word is that he played himself. Yeah. Um, and I'm hoping, I'm hoping, to be honest, especially for victims of rape that are silent, that have come out and nothing has happened, that it, it goes more than just the... Um, the uh, crime against our human rights, but also the rape. I know that our system, it's not just our system, it's a system globally and just the complicated nature of rape, that it's hard to persecute rape if you don't have physical evidence, especially if it's been a while away. But I'm hoping that we start to even see some wins in the court system in regards to rape, just to encourage people who have been, you know, who have been a victim of, of such ill acts. Mm -hmm. I'm touching the Nigerian law because um, we've been having this issue of rape for a while now and not once has anyone brought up, oh, let's bring an amendment into the um, law you know, against... I think that conversation is actually ongoing is, to a large um, extent, making mm. it a... It's been ongoing for a while, Elsie. I know ever since I've been in university, they, they bring it up every now and then, but what is actually done, I think it is time to put a foot down. And I think it is also time to review some of the privileges of our favorite celebrities, because if you feel like, if they feel like they have all this power, power mm. then they would want to abuse it. So we know power is very intoxicating, so a lot of them tend to get really high on their um, power and their influence, and they just feel like they can misuse it. But allegedly, as <laughs> which is the key <laughs> word here, <laughs> allegedly, if the band just done all those things, I think it should face the full wrath of the law. And like you said, the statute of limitation that say you cannot really prove rape. Mm. But I think we should actually begin to review all those things. But yes, reviewing it might be difficult, but I believe that if there's, there's a will, will, there is a way. Mm. So we just need to put our mind to it mm. and just know that, okay, there is a way where we can find out these things. And I think a lot of places now should begin to have the CCTV thing going on. Mm. I think that's another thing we should because if we can go back and not the ones that you wipe out every three months mm. no the ones that can be permanent mm. because if we're talking i like the fact that you said we should start having more conversations about the hotel because that's mm. where most of the evidence lies right imagine it's a hotel that has cctv footage from five years ago and we can mm. have those records and we can actually place the band mm. in the same hallway as a room especially do you understand mm. like if there are things like that that are being put in place then there are ways that we can actually attain justice for people so these things are not rocket science yeah, is just putting actually. the mm. right measures in place to avoid mm. this thing i want to touch on the part where you said reviewing um celebrities um, privileges and i want to say it's not just about celebrities it's about nigeria, nigeria. Yeah. Yeah. once it's maybe reviewing the privileges that comes with money mm. in this country because i was on my way to um, um to the um, office i was listening to a radio station and i had the uh, presenter being very bitter and complaining about why it is very easy for the police to be manipulated 
manipulated. And I actually think that the word manipulated is too much mm. to use with the police because yeah. you don't need to manipulate, manipulate them. them. You just mm. need to, you know, coerce. Mm. Is it coerce? Mm. You just put the money on the table mm. and you just they need do. to talk. Do you put your so money we, where we your mouth to, is. Yeah. We need to, as a people, now generally, we need to go back to actually revisit the kind of privileges we can actually just buy with money, even mm. when you know the law. Because these are people that are supposed to know the law, but yeah. they but don't that conversation really will even go deeper, it into, will go deeper. into poverty. I, th I think at the end of the day, hmm. even being here, like maybe about a year now, I can say that majority of the problems I've seen Nigeria has is because of money. Even the culture is because of money. The hmm. toxicness is because of money. Um, but I would say, though, I, I don't know how impossible it would be to make the system um, support supports rape victims, especially when you are not going to be moved by emotions or by sentiments. So I think the only thing that I can see that is valuable, and I know that they've done in other places as well that I've been in, is making it super easy for rape victims to record their experiences. So um, there's a case of uh, someone I know in uh, Melbourne that she made a phone call to the person, there's a center that you call for when you've been raped, and that she made a phone call to this person ages ago, ages ago, and then didn't do anything about it because she didn't have the power, and obviously she wanted to heal. And when she brought up, when she decided to come out, I think five years after, that was the evidence that she had, that she had made a phone call, and the particular day that she claimed you know, to have had that. So I think if people, if women in general, raped or not, start to have those numbers and places that you can go to or call, even if you're not ready to persecute or you're not interested in doing any of those things, start to make actions that are recordable just in case. So that's why even me, when I'm going out to friends places or going to a guy's place, I always tell someone, I'm going to this person's house, just so that it can be recorded there that, okay, there's evidence that this is where I was the last time and et cetera, et cetera. I know we don't want to put the, the pressure on the victim, but you have to protect yourself and it's not an ideal world. Yeah, in as much as we don't want to put the pressure on the victim, I also think um, we should begin to talk to our children, the male child to be precise because we're talking about how they should but we're not teaching them how they should treat women rights because i don't think you need to call anyone to tell them you are coming to see a guy but talking, if they are talking no, about no, no. Taking, no talking about taking it all back because we've spent the whole show actually our time is almost mm -hmm. talking about rape so yeah, let's bring in what tony tones has said which is saying scrap um, bride price. Yes, mm. I, w I, I like that conversation because okay. I've seen a lot of men that after they beat their wife or after they do certain things to them, they'd be like, hey, hey don't put your mouth where you the one that paid the bride price. Mm -hmm. They see it like it is their right mm -hmm. because I paid for you. Again, and women poverty. are not supposed <laughs> No, sometimes you even see that they're big men. That, it is but, poverty no, that makes you value fathers, money like that. You know, she says some, she fathers. said women are not properties to be sold. Mm. So that is now related now, to Back let's bring it back. Let's bring it back. Sold the woman. To, yes. Do you know that there are men that their daughters are their retirement plan? Mm -hmm. Which is the poverty? Poverty. No, they are actually good. If eh? which good? Yeah, how, if you are good, how are you good? And you, you need wouldn't a need a retirement plan, plan <laughs> as your as your you daughter. Are, if you are good, they you are wouldn't. Actually, they have if seen eh? very they are not good men enough. Men good. Have, no, no, I've seen very comfortable men. That make it a point of duty to make sure their daughter marries a, another m more comfortable man. Yeah, that's not do you understand? They are that's not, for them. They are trying to ensure no, that their child why? gets into a So that when they're talking about bright price, they oh. can give you the bill of 10 million. If then that person then is it is about money. If it's, it's, about it's, money. Either it's about it's money not, or it's not about yeah, money. Yeah, so I don't want us to use poverty. It's about... But what is poverty? What, if, if, what is that? You think poverty is when you cannot eat three times in a day? I'm, I'm talking about money-driven agendas. It's money-driven. Okay. You can okay. scrap that. Like I've, I've, we've talked about uh, what's it called, bright price on the table too many times. And mm -hmm. for me, because I, I didn't really grow up here, it's, I always like to hold on to culture and everything. So I used to promote, it, especially being in a foreign relationship. I know, so I know it's my culture, and I guess because I'm with somebody who doesn't even have that toxic masculinity, I really wanted him to participate in that. But coming to Nigeria, putting it in context is, is extremely toxic and it's not necessary. But you have to think about it this way. For you to scrap out, um, what's it called, a uh, bride price, you're also scrapping out a, way, a lot of ways that women get empowered. So um, it, unfortunately, we, a marriage is still a way for people, for, pe for women to exit poverty. We've had that conversation, we talked about um, Igwe and the boys, thing and all of that type of stuff. So a lot of men are being taught how to empower themselves. But for women, you are taught to be trained, to be a homemaker, because that gets you out of poverty. I agree with what she's saying and what you're saying, but what I usually look at is the possibility. 
Another of bride thing. price actually being scrapped in Nigeria uh, as a whole. It's, 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 hmm. it's, it's already happening. It's, it's happening. Yeah, another thing that we need to look at is the, our choice of music. Our artists still uh, need to do If you're going into you another deeper mean, conversation that we don't have time. That's how we wrap up this episode of Tea Time. You just should let David do, but okay. Thank you for watching and join the conversation by sending your opinions via WhatsApp to 0906. 6005719 or tweet at us at Plus TV Africa. Remember, you can catch up on this episode and all exclusive content by subscribing to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. Also, watch the time on r TV and in London on Ben Television. My thank you as always go to my co anchors, Ife Omai and Ife Olua Oshunke. Yes, that's me. And the entire production team. Thank you for watching Plus TV Africa's Tea Time. My name is Elsie Godwin. Please do stay safe.